Мы приглашаем вас на новый эпизод воскресной ночной битвы. Welcome to another exciting episode of Sunday Night Fight. Polizei Funk, I am here with my man Yoink, and the first portion of our show is now complete, and welcome to the main event. This is the Company of Heroes 2 Beta to Open Tournament, a 2v2 tournament. We're down to the semis and the finals. These were played earlier today. We're going to show you the deciding game from the left bracket semifinals between Dawnstar and which is comprised of an absolute legend of Company of Heroes. This is Gold Radier. Don't know exactly how to pronounce his name. Gold Radier. Gold, he probably doesn't know either. It's a made-up word. But this is the L Company of Heroes 1 legend, the absolute most dominant player in the game for the first two, or two years of its release, playing alongside with his little brother, Sun Angel, Representing Dawnstar, they're in the top bracket of uh, the left semifinals, and they are going up against a hell of a team. It's the All-Stars team, All-Stars clan, comprised of Symbiosis, who's two or perhaps three-time 2v2 tournament winner, and his mate, Gamor. So we have got the deciding game between these two teams coming up on Oka River. What do you think, Yoink? I'm excited to see uh, Gold Radier play. I mean, it, I will echo your sentiments that he was one of the finest Company of Heroes players. He's one of the sort of founding fathers of competitive play in Company of Heroes. I mean, he was extremely popular back in the 2007-2008 era. Uh, people were making joke accounts because he was so popular. I remember there was a guy uh, running around with the Gold Radiator account. I don't know if that I was him or that. not. Gold Radiator Gold was Radiator. popular for a while. Yeah. <laughs> that was um, funny. <laughs> But when, when you're such a great player that people start making, you know, novelty accounts, making fun of your name because everybody knows who you are, I mean, that's that's pretty legit. You know, there's no such thing as bad publicity, and this guy had all kinds of publicity because he was so good. Uh, I have been watching his replays with his little brother, a Sun Angel, on KOTU.org. For those of you that don't know, KOTU.org has probably one of the best replay sections for uh, the Company of Heroes 2 beta anywhere on the internet. And uh, we've, having a, we've oh, been having a great time looking through them. I can safely say that it is the best at the moment. Yes, we can, yeah, we can say that. Exactly. So these You'll two guys, all the Dawn Star, have been there. dominating. That's exactly right. And Simbi, well, Simbi's been a hero on Sunday Night Fights for a couple of seasons now. I mean, he was intensely competitive in our last season. And uh, I thought for sure he was going to go all the way. Um, but uh, I'm not familiar with his partner, Gamor. But I'm sure they're going to show us a great show here uh, on this very, very cold map coming up. What's the name of this map, Ami? Oka River. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. We've got a lot more to say, but let's get them underway. We've got so much content to, to deliver to you guys tonight. This is just the semis. We want to show you a game from the other bracket semifinals as well, between Ibuprofen, which is Marina's Reborn, and OMG Pop, who we saw earlier, and NKVD, which is Daniel D and Titty Twister. 
uh, Titty Twister, another name you might recognize. He made it to a uh, semi-contender uh, bout in the last season of Sunday Night Fights. So here we are, paused at five seconds. Everybody ready to go? Our observer NTD, big props to him. First time observing Company of Heroes 2. Um, Yoink, you ready to go? I am. Let's get this game started. I'm paused at five seconds. If NTD can show us the game clock, let's get started here in five, four, three, two, one, start. And the clock is ticking at seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh, it's so cold on the Oka River. I hear it's beautiful when it's not frozen. I, I really like this map. The, the two maps that they added to the pool between the alpha and the, and the closed beta are both excellent maps, and we're going to be showcasing them tonight. Our finals will be on the other one, which is Moscow Outskirts. And both of these maps, you know, like here you have an ice river that runs north-south and sort of snakes through the map. Um, this sort of snaking pattern reminds me of Angerville. And, you know, there's, there's nothing wrong with Angerville. And, it, and it's not, you know, it's not an impassable river. Units can cross right ac uh, across of this ice. And, you know, like ice in Company of Heroes 2 uh, creates some incredible possibilities. Tanks can sink through the ice. You know, like a, like a napalm barrage can open the ice up and maybe drown a panther or, um, you know, mortars can open the ice up. And so, although this map looks really split left and right, uh, it, in fact, it's not. It's easy to flank across that ice. And so I, I really, I'm digging the potential of this as a competitive 2v2 map. Well, you know, I've played Oka River many times, and I love it. I echo all of your sentiments about how great it is and the flankability. Now, this river, though, while it could be... I have, I have never seen it completely destroyed, but arguably... No, no. It well, it refreezes as well. Right, it does refreeze, but I mean, it could, it could, in a very intense artillery battle, cause problems getting across it, but I have yet to actually play a game where that came into a significant amount of problems for somebody. Well, you don't usually have sweet targets there because they know better, right? I mean, you're not going to put right, your big exactly. expensive tank out on the ice where it can sink in one shot. Right. Now, uh, our first engagement here is uh, in the middle, just to the left of the big P. We have... Oh, who is that? That is uh, Gamor garrisoning that Russian Orthodox Church, which is actually accurately modeled. I had a discussion with Bob yesterday about uh, the history of the Russian Orthodox Church, and we have. Uh, oh, by the way, I am. Uh, I'm following. And it's Sydney Onion Dome. Gamor. Yes, okay, well, then I'll hop over and follow Golradier, my idol. You know, um, you know, like I have to say, Sunday night fights. We've been doing it for many years now, but. Um, I used to, like, as a little COH scrub, when I was a total nobody, you know, and nobody knew me and I knew nobody, I, I used to fantasize about a world series of Company of Heroes between Anikitos and Gold Radier. I thought that that would just be the coolest thing ever. But, you know, like, when, when Gold Radier was dominant, there was no SNF, and, you know, th there was, like, a crazy clan war between, between his clan and a competing clan with, like, Vintensby and Anikitos and all these guys and that was the closest we ever got to a really organized sort of best of three situation between the best players in the game and I just always wanted to see that happen and that's that's like the driving force between this whole project just wanting to see the best players in the game go at it head to head in a best of as many as possible series. Right, and it's in a controlled environment where you know that nobody's cheating, everything's above board, you know, everybody's starting at the same time. It's very good, and look at this, we're, we're watching, we're seeing great players. Here's Simbi driving that sniper truck now around to try and flank that MG42 to back up his teammate who's been able to escape the, that MG42's fire. And now we're trying to get, looks like Russians are going to try and engage on both sides of this engagement here right by this Russian Orthodox Church, and Conscripts launching that Molotov. Forcing that MG42 out of there. Boy, you know what I like? Look at this sniper truck. It's just at long range, picking off units. Very nice. Yeah, Simbi, uh, um, you know, if, if any player could sort of um, make a name for doing a certain thing. Like, okay, Marcus now has made him his, uh, his name the M3 
like truck guy, right? He's put every possible unit in those trucks, flamers, um, snipers, guards, but Symbiosis is the real like double sniper master. You'll see snipers from him in opening builds in every single game that Gamora and he will play, and it's always a pleasure to watch his sniper micro. Machine gun squad. Yeah, and these guys now, they've, uh, you know, consolidated their forces. They're not doing as much capping as the Germans are. Instead, they're focusing on pushing Germans off the field, which is a, it's a completely legitimate strategy early on. You know, just force the enemy off and then cap at your leisure instead of making a giant land grab in the center. And now we're going to see the same sniper car engaging at long range. I'm going to turn off my fog of war and see what he can and can't see. Yeah, he's got pretty good sight range with that scout car. It's actually really good sight range. Yeah, it is. It's great. He's chasing that sniper. He's chasing Gold Raider Sniper. He's going to try to take a shot on retreat. No, they won't fire. Yeah, not for this now. Oh yep. And here comes the hard counter, but he's need to, he's got to upgrade, and he hasn't started upgrading yet. He's not going to be able to really deal with the uh, M3 truck until he gets the upgrade no, gun. I I think I think that the regular gun on that scout car could probably deal with the M3 just just fine. You know, the M3 is just It'll so take a horrible while. to small arms fire. Two. Now on the other side of the river, there hasn't been too much action. Although Gamora is pushing to take that fuel that's on the right side of the river. That's very important for the northern very player important. to keep that fuel there, down there. There are two fuels on this map. One is, you know, nestled in the shadow of the church, and then the other is over there on the right by the VP. And it's also interesting that Goradir has elected to uh, build an early fuel cache on that, on that strat point just above that. Oh, yeah, that's kind of far from the base. It might be difficult to defend. I mean, there's certainly fuel points that are much closer... I mean, a scrap point's much closer to his base that, that he might be able to to hold that on to. That point's a pain in the ass, though. It's surrounded by heavy snow. It takes a really long time for infantry to, like, clamber their way up there. And, you know, you'd have to bring something with either Flamers or Shreks to, to get rid of that fuel point. Look, he's making another one. They're really going for the late game, these uh, these German players. Goal's spamming out two fuel caches. Here comes the half-track, and he's got that loaded up with a sniper and some Grens. Of course, the sniper can't shoot out of that one, but he will deploy them at the front. Yeah, and you know what? The thing is, I, I, I get their strategy uh, to go late game because if you... This this map, there is a lot of open area in this map, especially in the center when it comes to this, you know, frozen river. Heavy tanks like Panthers or Tigers on this map are going to dominate because, you know, Soviet AT guns can't fire in every direction, you know, and they get flanked really easy. I think that's what they're probably going to go for here. Yeah, they are, they are looking for some big, fat, late-game tanks. You can also see, let's see, whoa, we've got two half-tracks out. One on the right, and then we got a Flammenwerfer for half-track on the left from Sun Angel. Let's see what he can do this. This can be a dominant unit. It can really wreck any kind of support teams. It's strong enough to flank an AT gun and, and burn it to a crisp before it can even rotate. Um, let's see, the blizzard is now in effect. We saw the little countdown timer. That decreases all of the unit's line of sight. It slows them down a bit, although there was a little change uh, during this beta that uh, units move a bit quicker in the, beta, in, in the blizzard. Sorry. And you can see that Fla Flamer HT working on this infantry, and it fries them to a crisp. Oh, wow. They, they, you know what? They may die on retreat. They're going to die of hypothermia running back to their base. It's very possible. Now, I also wanted to note that you had said that Simbi likes to have two snipers, but apparently in Company of Heroes 2, Simbi likes to have three snipers. He's upped his game. He's got three sniper units right now? That's Whoa. three sniper units. Kay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's man. different. He's trying to wipe out entire squads. Uh, we also have the, the famous Opel Blitz truck from Gold Radiator hopping in. So not only did he build two fuel caches, but now he's called in this cargo truck, which can go and park on a point. Now, he's parked it in the, in the capping radius. You don't even need to do that. He could have parked it back by his base. It would have been a little safer, and it would have had the same effect. Um, to and This Opel Blitz truck, we just had a thread about it on Kotu.org, and, and Ahenian made this amazing post. He's another COH legend that just mathematically breaks down the power of this thing. You can see the little animation. Every 20 seconds, it gives you fu fuel and munitions. And and if you control more than two or three points on the whole map, it will give you plus six munitions and plus three fuel, which every 20 seconds really adds up, does just amazing amounts for your resources over the course of the game.
So you, you well, can see also Sun Angel's got one on the left. So Goradir and Sun Angel are playing the serious resource strat. Dude, they are. What's their income right now? I mean, it's got to be intense right now. Yeah, we've got plus 47 munitions and plus 38 fuel compared to what have you got on the Russian side? Yeah, the Russians got plus 37 munitions and plus 16 fuel right now. So more than twice the fuel income for the Germans. Yeah, that's uh, going to be tanks. Oh, tanks a tanks a tanks. Uh, running <laughs> carousel tanks -o -tanks. of tanks. Right. Yes. <laughs> it's a circus of tanks is what it's going to be on the Oka River. These three snipers are going to work, but once again we're seeing them miss units that are garrisoned in the Onion Dome Church. As soon as they get out, look, as soon as they get out, they're dead meat. All three of them died instantly, but Don't while they were in the outside. church, the snipers couldn't really hit them or something. Justin's yeah, made there. Here, here we're seeing the barrage ability of the ZIS 376mm field gun. Um, it's not only an attack, an anti-tank gun, but it's also like a little mini howitzer. Um, takes that house down, the MG's yeah, got a better go. house right down. And you know what, this Flamin' Warfare's gonna flank it real easy. Uh, oh, this Flamin' Warfare's gonna not own it. No support from Prediction. Soviet infantry anywhere. Yeah, got, yeah, kiting and ownage. That, that AT gun is... Oh, he's got another oh. one, though. Oh, hi! There's a second one! Look at that! Oh, but oh, behind hi, the building. Oh, how you doing? Oh, what's oh, hey. that over there? Look at that. What's up? I got my buddy. Yeah, well, backing me up. Yeah, all right. Up. It's gonna escape. But it's still that. It takes go. it takes a shot and escapes. Somehow doesn't right, receive any kind of crit. Yeah, but the T70's on the main and the road. T70, and the T70. Oh, it right yeah, now. the T70's go. going hunting. Go. Hunting season is open. I'm hunting me Flammerver for HTs. It's a cute little tank. Uh, it's spotted There's mortar. This, it, Let's go over there. So now each of them have a Flammerver for HT. Goal has up upgraded his as well. Excellent. That little T-70 did his job. Took out that mortar unit. Just saw a target of opportunity and took it down. So Sun Angel's bringing a pack up on the ice, and Goal's got two Grenadier squads that could Faust away. So they do have the capability to counter that T-70. But the, the, the thing about the T-70 is that it's incredibly agile. It's really fast. It can zip from left to right. You know, it can outrun most of the medium tanks. It's a very fun unit to micro. Yeah, it's got a quick turn radius, too. Oh, here comes these snipers, dude. Look, and doing business right by the T-70. Oh, you cannot run Grenadier. Okay, let's see if Simbi can, this. can this avoid bad. being Fausted, though. I mean, wow, he doesn't even care. Look at that. He oh. let the Grens walk right up on him, and the snipers are shredding Oh, this guy might go down. Oh, he's got really lucky. He took that, that Gren. <laughs> that could have been bad. You know, he dropped the MG-42. He's going to be picked up immediately, immediately by Gamora's yeah. conscript, adding conscripts. to their firepower. Looks very so, uh, the Russians must probably feel pretty good about their situation although they're being drained and I, I think I think they have no idea that there are in effect four fuel OPs just pouring fuel in on the German side and I think that there's gonna be a bit of a, a, a sort of WTF moment when the Germans just start rolling out the late tier armor Okay, well, they're going to start right now because they're both, uh, let's see, Goldreader building... Already? Are you serious? It's only 13 minutes in. They're building Tier 4. They're building, uh, Goldreader's building Tier 4, and Sunday Builders are building Tier 3. So, I mean, you know, that's, that's just, they're, they're about to get rolled over here in about another three minutes. You know, what's their fuel? What's in the rolled? bank right now? I wouldn't say rolled. I mean, we said earlier that the units need to support one another. That, you know, a big tank can't really do much on its own, so, um... You know, they don't have much of a support army. I mean, wh what is... I I'm, I'm seeing Gold building a Panther, and then to support it, he's got two Engineer squads, a Sniper, and one Grenadier squad. He's still got his, um... He's still got a uh, AC and his Flammeware for half-track, but he just, as in the form of casting power, he's only got three or four units. Yeah, he did lose, or one of them lost an entire Grenadier squad, the center to those Snipers. That was pretty rough. It was pretty bad. Um, we're seeing action here now in the south. I want to direct everybody's attention. Double T-70s going after the Oh, they're cute, aren't they? It's going to go down. We're going to yeah, get this for... What was it doing so far team. forward anyway, you know? I don't know. He, he was, was out probably of getting ready to roast. Three, yep. Good. Oh, man, here's how... You know what? They're probably going to take out AC's the scout gonna card, AC's going to fight too. it, too, man. He, AC yep. cannot handle two T-70s. Get it. Although, one of those T-70s is going down. I mean, it's really, really close. Uh, but, I think it's now, no way. It's the main gun of the T-70 fires so fast, it just chews up light vehicles and infantry. 
really well. Good little Puma. So I can tell you, you know, this is the best of three series, and what we're doing here is we're showing you the deciding game. I won't tell you what game number it was. And I personally have no clue who's going to win this. I haven't been spoiled yet, which is nice. But I can tell you that the winner of this game will go on to the finals. All right, so one of the stars is going to move on. If it's Dawn or All, we just don't know. Or as I called it one time, the awesome clan, not the all-stars clan. Look at this. Even a T-70 can't get a unit out of a house. Look at the look at the engine, the pyos in there just LOLing. That um, definitely needs to be adjusted. Hey, you, you know what right? the pyos are waiting ridiculous. for? Ridiculous. The pyos are waiting for something, and here it is. A oh, hi. What's that? To roll out under the ice. Like oh, <laughs> look at that. Where's your mortar now? Right? Like, Drop Why? that sucker in the drink. T70's exactly gonna try right. to play ring around the Rosie and and shot use the house to shot block <laughs> against the Panther. This is wonderful, oh, but he is not able get... to get out of the range of that main gun, and now he's a sitting duck. Uh, I was hoping to cue the Benny Hill music of uh, ring around the Rosie, but uh, looks like it's uh, gonna be no fun. And the pilots are like, can we come out now? Is it over? Right? Oh man, this T70 how is many, gonna be a watery grave. How many main grave. gun this shots did they just um, soak up from the T70? Is that T70 out of control, or has it not been finished off? No, What's up? it hasn't been finished off Panther. yet. Oh, now it's out Whoa. of control. P Panther with the long-range kill shot. This T70 is the longest death march ever. It's out of... Oh, there it goes. All right, check out Sun Angel with this Ostwin Flakpanzer. Excellent anti-infantry tank. And they're really fantastic at shooting down air units. I wonder, you know, if the Russians will call in any kind of IL-2 Sturmovic attacks, and we can watch that that Flag Panther shoot those planes down. That's always a dramatic moment in Company of Heroes. I have, yeah, I saw that. I've seen that one time, and it's awesome. It's fantastic. It is awesome. Uh, okay, we got AT guns that are the only thing that's stopping this Flammen Warfer and Oswin from moving southbound into Russian territory, and they've got to retreat because they have no backup right now. There's like one mortar backing them up. Oh, well, I should say, there are three snipers floating around them. So that's a good little backup, I suppose, for because Simbi can run those things around like death squads. Goal's got the Sturmpanzer Fear Brumbar entering the field. The Brumbar is an excellent anti-infantry tank. It has a little barrage ability of its own, and it will just it'll wipe out squads if you can get a good shot. And it'll wipe out AT guns as well. Oh yeah, it reminds me a lot of that British tank, the one that fires the tar round from the. Uh, it, uh, it's very powerful, that, that main gun shot. Not so great against armor. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, the like, AVRE. You're talking about the, the Churchill. AVRE, that's the, exactly. the, the, yep, the Churchill AVRE. The infamous yeah. Wump, yeah. You had me blanking for a while, but yeah, yeah the Wump of the AVRE, that's a very good analogy. They're kind of similar. It was now, do we have some yeah. kind of off map coming on on this AT position? What will this be? Here we have a plane flying in, a Stuka attack. This is from Sun Angel, who I'm not following. Let's see if I can switch over. This is sure it's, yeah, it's a be, it's strafing run, run from, from the, yeah, the Jotu 87 day. This is the, the um, Stuka strafe. He wants to get that AT so gun down to uh, provide um, an entry for his Ostwind. Yeah, I think uh, I think he's gonna escape escape damage from that. Stuka Do I run. hear Katusha firing? What what is firing here? Panzerwerfers? I heard it. I heard something. What is it? Where is it? No, I don't have any. Let me switch over to what Moore has got. Uh, no, it's Gold. It's Gold's, no, Gold's it's got gold. a Panzer okay. Bear. Yeah. I, I, I hope they update the sound file, but right now you can't tell the difference between the Katusha and the Panzer Bear. And of course, the Katusha needs a unique sound because it was one of the most unique sounds in all of the World War II uh, units. So I'd like to direct your attention. Will get its own sound. Now, this Panther okay. backing out on the ice. It is in, the in danger oh, of being boy. dunked, <laughs> dunked yep. like the clown at the like at the at the at the ball toss at the fair. Let's see if these. Oh my Russia God! Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> front bar. Oh, Let's oh, see. Yeah. It goes the other way. Look at that oh. swimming in there. Look at them swimming. Oh, the front bar dunks the infantry in one shot. They drop their MG42 light machine gun and just perish. They're fish food now. Beautiful play oh, from the front bar. Right. I love that. That was good stuff. 
you know what? Uh, on Sunday Night Fights, we now officially have a record for worst death in Sunday Night Fights. Is going into the Oka River after taking a blast in the face from a rum bar. Yeah, we have inaugurated yeah. Company of Heroes 2 streaming with a unit getting dunked. That was it. Congratulations, Sun Angel. You and are Brooke Bar. We'll go down now, in history. It's frozen over. It's dunking the first unit on our live stream. Check it out. The whole frozen I know, over right? Too, it's so freezing over again. The blizzard comes. The ice freezes. These tanks, though, I mean, come on. They're, Sun Angel's taking a huge gamble here, running his tanks around on that ice. I mean, they could just as easily get dunked. Right, I mean, yeah, a good a good shot, a mortar round, or uh, God forbid, a Russian launch artillery or something. But dude, look at the power of that Brum bar. Nine kills already, uh, ten kills. Somebody died on retreat, I guess. Uh, but just almost no damage, even though there was, oh, well, it was a half damage, okay, from all of those AT guns that were there. But just did tremendous work on the Russians. That was amazing. That was Gold's Brumbar. I'm sorry. That was Gold Radiator's Brumbar. I, I switched to Follow Sun Angel. It's his Flammenwerfer that's just going on some kind of crazy suicide mission. He's getting vet, but he surely that's going to be it for him. He's going to take care of that. Yeah, he's going to take him down. Or yeah. Like that. Oh, but Although he might, he might that. kill the conscripts before wow, they're able to retreat. Yeah. Retreating in Co. 2 is much more difficult than it is. I don't think in Co. 1, I don't think the units received the kind of retreat bonuses that they did in the first game. Uh, it'll be tweaked. I'm sure they're going to figure it out. I mean, who knows what kind of environmental factors they've added in and mixed in and all these other things that are going on. Wow, Here's another strafing run that has suppressed. Snipers. Yeah, it's suppressed them, but it's not damaging them now. So they are not afraid of that strafe. We've got one male squad. They're in the heavy white uh, KKK-looking outfits. And then we have two female squads. They've got the, like, they've got the sort of beige, beige gear. I wonder how that's long a good ratio. Simbi can work that's, that's, all of these snipers. Yeah, that's a good, that's ratio, a good party team. ratio, yeah, right? That's a really fun, fun you, team you, right you there. You want to yeah. stay at this party. Okay, T-70s now, right in the middle of the action. Another off-map ability coming in. What do we got over there? It was uh, at the former T-70 position. Incendiary, incendiary. Ah, right. Napalm, Boom. yeah. Incendiary. Ooh, it gets hot. Ah, look at that. It's really good so, for... It, it, um, Infantry, anti-infantry power. Yeah, it'll it'll totally cook infantry. But I've learned that you can also use it on ice to dunk tanks. So I, I wonder if we'll see that later in this game. Oh, man, uh, that MG42 yeah, right? that's good shit. The fire. That's uh, yeah, right there. Yeah, you can really cook ice. It's a it's a great doctrine choice on this map in particular uh, to just annihilate Oka River, especially in the center. It can cover a large portion of the center of that uh, crossing. So we, we need a, a Nuki to play a, a tune for the, the, the brand new uh, Tiger One that <laughs> just rolls over one of the fire pits um, in Goal's base as he rolls out onto the field. And, you know, like they've got the big powerful units, but, you know, Simpy and Gamor have the VP control right now. They're all over that left-hand side. And those, you know, the snipers and the couple of AT guns, they've got a nice little wall over there. It's going to be a tough nut to crack. You know what, I gotta say, I agree with you, the left-hand side combat has gone a lot better for the Russians than I thought it would, uh, despite this continuous strafing. But they've really used the sight lines of the buildings on the left side to protect themselves and their AT guns to provide these sort of channels that the Flammen Warpers have to go down, and they've done a good job of just taking them out. I've been very impressed so far, but now here we have Mr. Tiger, who is a lot different than a Flammen Warper in terms of what kind of damage he can give and receive on his He's got a face an SU-85, yeah, and a couple of AT guns. Um, next, NTD, next time um, some kind of um, aerial ability is called in by the Axis, go ahead and turn the Fog of War on so you can see how these uh, lingering and loitering scouts will go and just do a, you know, like a sortie across the entire map. It'll give you viz all over the place. So, so NTD, next time they do a, an aerial ability, go ahead and turn the Fog of War off. Whoa, that Tiger's taking some damage. SU-85 yeah. popping in there. He's got the he's got the binoculars popped, so he can see further into the blizzard here. 30 seconds, and we're going into blizzard lockdown mode. There is another uh, napalm used against these grenadiers, but they uh, nimbly micro away, and it's looking to heat up. Okay, here's the here's the ability. So this is going to run for 35 seconds. So NTD, go ahead and turn the fog of war on, and let's watch how this 
this uh, Stuka provides LOS all over the map. I'm not sure. See, he's following you. He's actually empty. he's following the Soviets. Yeah, look, look at that. Over. Look at look at the dynamic true sight act as the as the Stuka flies around. He just spotted on the snipers. Vision yeah, in Company of Heroes 2 is going to be a real point of contestation. You know, you've got snipers that can launch flares and provide line of sight from a, a little flare coming down on a parachute. And, um, you know, these snipers can go up in the front and they can cloak when they're in cover. And extending the line of sight of your, of your units is going to be hugely important. And that will be how many battles are won or lost. Yeah, you know, I, I think we have not yet seen a metagame uh, strategy that really invests heavily in that, and I'm looking forward to seeing that at some point. I think that it's going to exist. I just, you know, we just haven't seen it yet, but I agree with you completely that that uh, site is so much more important. And also, just being able to see in a blizzard right now, I can't see crap. <laughs> well, the off-map abilities are raining in. I can hear the bombs being dropped. Axis is putting together a wonderful push. Uh, Gold Raider's Broombar is going straight into an AT gun. They're both vetting on the damage that he... Let's see if the Broombar can annihilate the squad before he goes down. It's going to be close. You know what? This SU-85 is going to come down there and support. Uh, the Brumbar, I don't think, is going to be able to pull it off in time, especially if this SU-85 gets into sight position right now, just like that. Now we can start firing with a powerful main gun. And infantry up, then down it goes. Did it just get abandoned? Oh man, if Russians take a Brumbar, that would be intense. We're going to have to grab it out from under this MG. The, the Tiger's pushing it at the top. It's really popping off everywhere. The battlefront is so long, it's hard to call what's going on. The Tiger is being flanked beautifully by a Gamora AT gun that is just tearing into its side armor. But the Tiger turns around and one-shots it. Oh my. Oh, you know what? Yeah, it looks like uh, it looks like Symbiosis was able to steal the Brumbar, and He's going he has for it. reinforceable engineers right there to repair it. He's in a great position to take back that piece of German armor and really turn the tide against uh, Dawnstars. They're they're in danger of freezing, but uh, one nice trick that you can do with your engineers. Well, they decide to reman the AT gun instead. Of course, he can just he can just pump them out of this um, wonderful. M uh, MG, you know, the M17, you can reinforce at that half track. So it's it's a quad half track, and he can get more dudes there. So he can reinforce and repair at the same time. And a nice little trick with the combat engineers, if you can get on the rear armor of a tank, the chances are that will be green cover, and you will counter the effects of cold. This tiger has got something to say about it, though. The, the, these uh, twin tigers from the brothers. The Soviets. Brothers yeah. Gold yeah. and Sun Angel have twin tigers working on that pilfered Brumbar. Yeah, down it goes. Down it was, it they, goes. they recognized how dangerous it would be to have a Brumbar on the Soviet side, so they just decided to take that out. Now, these two Tigers, they're looking not so healthy, so I think he's probably going to stay put because he knows there are AT guns. Both of them know there are AT guns and at least one SU-85 in the south. Probably not a good idea to engage. But I see, do see German repair squads coming up fast and furious to try and grab... Oh my god, there's a third Tiger on the field. What? Three Tigers! It, it, it ain't it ain't Company of Heroes anymore, son. Three Tigers on the field, how about that? Uh, if NTD could take us into Simbi and Gamor's base, Simbi does have the beautiful IS-2 heavy tank. This tank named after Yosef Stalin himself. Uh, that's a gorgeous sort of Pershing-esque allied tank that can uh, take the fight to these Tigers, but well, three of them, it can't, it's not going to be able to handle that. Yeah, there's going to need to be a little bit more action than one IS-2. I mean, Tiger versus IS-2 is a great matchup, but three on one, uh, I don't care how big St Stalin's mustache is, it's not going to be able to bounce all those rounds off the front. It's uh, going to need some backup. All right, we have, I think that's going to be an, uh, an incendiary attack, and the Axis players recognize it. They retreat their infantry away. They even move their tanks away, and that will be some wasted munitions. That will not do anything. You know, Yoink, I have to say I love these new sort of FPS style capping circles. I, I think they create really dramatic moments with units stepping in and out to start or stop caps. And uh, the fact that, you know, units can repair and cap at the same time, I, I love it. I think it's good stuff. I think it's good for the game. Did you just hear that main gun shot of the IS-2? Man, that is such a unique sounding gun. It's just, it oh, sounds so much heavier. Church. Church is on fire. We got we got off-map units uh, abilities coming in. The Russians are trying to hold this fuel point. 
Tigers are no, going in deep, yeah. trying to finish the IS-2 off. Yeah, this SU-85 is going to try... Dual SU-85s now. Or S I'm sorry, dual IS-2s going after that Tiger. No, no, one Tiger of them is an ISU-152. We got, we got each tank here. Oh, we got the yeah, Ultra right, Heavy right, Tier right. 4 ISU-152 that, that really is best at range. It has no business being so close to a Tiger. I mean, ideally, Gamor would want to have that way the hell at the back of his unit. Whoa, huge! <laughs> Stuck a bombing attack! Almost killed the ISU-152. The, 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 the Stuka dive bomber flew right into my face and has taken that ISU down to very low health. We still have a Panther in here. He's taking AT gunfire. There are Constrips there to help. Oh, man. man this uh, this these, Panther was facing this, the wrong way. Oh, he no, yeah, taken he out that ISU. No, yeah, he is surrounded. The SU-85 is firing at him. This, oh, this trouble. Boy, this Panther oh is going to escape with its life if it can. Oh, More way abilities coming in. What do we have this time? Down What's it, it going to be this time? There's the red smoke. Increase your efforts. Uh, what? Nothing? Uh, what? Where'd it go? No, oh, no, there we go. Scraping it's a scraping run. run. Scraping right. run. So that'll yeah, loiter for a while. That'll be good against Symphony. But check out the flak. Check out the quad, how it, how it fires at planes. We might... In fact, it did. Look, it killed it the strafing run. It that thing usually yeah, goes for a down, while. Yeah. It, it crashed off map. The, the quad just took it down. Oh, that was intense. You know what, though? Um, German's still in very good control of victory points. And that is going to be a problem for the Soviets because up to the well, it's north, really close. there are... It's, it's negligibly close, I would say. Yeah, but no. you know what? There are two Tigers that are almost completely repaired coming in here. Yeah, but we the, the ISU-152 lived. If he can just get it out of, you know, you don't want that to see any real close combat. You want that way the hell at the back. The range of the ISU-152 is like the elephant. It's 140. It's the longest range in the game. It's like the 88 range from Company of Heroes. So you want that way the hell at the back, and you want your other units going up, fighting LOS for it, and then he can just plug away like a, like two screen flags on the enemy armor. Oh, it just spotted a tiger. Here it is. Here's its great position. But you know what? Just got. Oh, what was that? It was driver. Oh, engine is burning. The engine is on fire on that. Uh, I. Uh, that's an SU-85. All right. That's. I uh, thought maybe it was the uh, the other tank. I got confused for a second. But now it's treating back into Russian territory. The Germans have been so good about reclaiming the map. Look how they've capped the Russians out. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. They're controlling like a great amount of victory points and they still have an incredibly high army value on the field that's finally coming back into service after that last skirmish we had about three or four minutes ago. So the Russians have got to not only overcome this German armor, but then also take back territory. I'm not seeing actually a whole lot of capping units for Simbi. He's only got two engineers and two snipers. That's it. Gamor, Gamor's the one with more capping power. He's still got plenty of conscripts, mortars, engineers, etc. So, Yo Yoink, I'm so sad faced right now. The Onion Dome Church went down in the center and I missed it. I don't know if NTD caught it on the stream, but uh, that's a wonderful graphic. Well, you see it in the intro video, but that, that church going down has a fa fantastic um, destruction animation. Yeah, the physics of the collapse of the walls. It's still smoldering. And how yeah. So we're we're entering 30 seconds till blizzard time. So LOS will go down, and and this is where like snipers, um, scouting forward, trying to stay cloaked, trying to stay in cover, trying to provide LOS for those big fat tanks could be very powerful. You can see the Germans are sort of entering hunker down mode. They've built a couple of bunkers. Um, these bunkers, of course, can be upgraded to either a, a sort of healing station with the three medics, or you can make a MG out of them, or you can make them a forward reinforce point. So they're very um, useful and diverse. I haven't seen any upgrades from them yet. Well, one's, one's got an MG gunner. One's, a, one's an MG. They He's both, covering they, they the victory both have point. MG gunners. That's like the last thing I, I would have thought they would have got. But <laughs> they made them both MG bunkers. And their little pios have made a new campfire, so they're warm and repairing all their units. Um, the, the Axis are entering lockdown mode. But you can see that there's still some capping going on. These combat engineers from the Russians, they're going to pay for it, though. They're freezing while they're capping. Yeah, there's also an elephant on the field. Sun Angel built an elephant. Look at that. Just a filthy, powerful oh, big gun, man. right? Tigers backed up by elephants. How do you crack that? 
You know, the, well, the thing about the Elephant and the ISU 152, I mean, they're, they're very similar tanks. They're both hella long range, you know, two screenfuls, literally. But um, surprisingly, they're not just anti armor vehicles. They, they, they do crazy splash damage and they'll kill infantry from miles away. Well, almost all of the tanks now in Company of Heroes do much greater infantry damage than, you know, they did in Company of Heroes 1. Like the Panther, for instance. I mean, taking up the Panthers can do great damage, as we saw in the last game with Seppa, uh, supported by uh, just about anything. You know, I thought that the, it's been a, it's much different than from Company of Heroes 1. Yeah, most of the tanks, they have, you know, the new secondary um, machine gun upgrade. And those those gunners, you know, not only is there the, the turret gunner on top of the turret, but there's also the, you know, like, driver gunner slot that pokes out and shoots a dude. So, yeah, they have a lot of anti-infantry capabilities. Now, let's see if these teams can position their, their mega tanks, the Elephant and the ISU-152, so that they're firing. Okay, they're definitely in range now. Maybe NTD could toggle the fog of war on and off, and we can watch this battle from one side or the other. It's oh, very we got some tension against on the Soviet LOS side, though. Works, particularly in a blizzard. You know what? Gamora and Simbi crashed off. their two tanks together, and uh, yeah, Simbi's uh, Gamora's tank got out of position. You know what? Because of that. I, I really like the Axis um, formation. The two Tigers are leading the Elephant, and that's exactly what you need to do. Um, the, the, the Allies had a little bit more difficulty. They, they, yeah, they got their tanks hung up on each other. The IS-2 needs to lead for the IS-152. Right, I oh, do hear man, that. Look at all these heavies. IS-152 firing. In the oh, snow, my, my god. This is yeah, like right? hell. If you were, tank if you were in the there blizzard, as a soldier, freezing, it would be like a white shot at loud by mega tanks. No, not a happy place. Yeah, this one hands are rare for raining rockets on your head. Pioneers reporting objective captured. Yeah, rockets coming down on nothing, really. Sounds like. There are Russian engineers desperately trying to repair this ISU-152 because it is pretty much the the crux of the uh, anti-vehicle capacities of the Soviet army right now. And as this blizzard passes and we survey the battlefield, we see just a no man's land where these tanks just had this giant boxing fest all around the ruins of that Russian Orthodox Church. Now I believe that the Germans are actually in a better position to push forward. They have their heavy tanks supported by engineers. There's not a lot of Panzer Grenadier support, but looking down at the Soviet army, really they're starving, they're cold, they're not reinforced. And the only thing that's uh, between them and being rolled by a bunch of German heavy armor is this IS-2 heavy tank. Well, I, I like what they're doing. You know, he's got a triple repair happening. He's reinforcing and reimpairing. Uh, <laughs> reimpairing. I made up word for the day. Uh, reinforcing and repairing at the same time. And, uh, and also dying to cold. You can hear him panting. They're probably going to keel over a few of those Russians on the left. But they have that ISU-152 back up to tip top shape. They're ready to go at it again, man. When it, you know, the blizzard has lifted, and usually now it's when it all pops off. Yeah, and you know what? Oh, he just built a uh, campfire, which is probably just wonderful for these troops to finally get some warmth. And the other thing that's uh, that Simi's got going for him is that half track. He can reinforce all of those conscript squads, and I think that it's so important. Just. So we're missing a fight on the right, an ISU and a Tiger going head to head. Well, this is interesting because we can sandbox a 1v1 here. Yeah, well, it's uh, there's already some tactical mismanagement here. We got an ISU with his ass facing the Tiger. Yeah, never, so that's never not a good show your idea. ass to, to the enemy. Right. You show your ass to the Tiger and you get the claws. That's what oh, you're going to get. Oh, look, he was hoping the Tiger would give chase, and then they were trying the you know, uh, napalm trick. That Look, it really does open up a big hole, but, um, you know, Gold right here was too smart for it. Didn't fall back on out of there. Yep. And, now, uh, now it's popping know, off to the left. Oh, this is going to be a huge attack. Oh, oh my god. My god. The Axis area of effect abilities are coming in. This infantry straight. This is the bad. Tigers are pushing forward. The elephants firing. The Neville Lurker is repping. Three shape. Tigers. Four Tigers on the map right now. The one on the right is getting double teamed by IS-2s, but you know, I think the Axis are going to accept that trade. They're going <laughs> to, you know, three against the whole Russian army on the left is more important than that one Tiger that's trying to fight on the right. Look at this. Oh my god, I don't know what to look at. I don't know what to look at more. There's like this action is, uh, this, I think of this IS-2 is going down. 
I'm more interested in what's yeah, going on is, on the right here. Yeah, this is knockout punch. This is like round nine. Put you on the canvas for good. These tigers rolling in here. Here they come. They're just, these tigers are going to go right into the base. This might be the end here. There's not, if these, if these two Russian tanks go down, forward. there's nothing left. The infantry's capping up. Yeah, this tiger's going to go down on the right. It looks like that IS-2 uh, is indeed going to be victorious. And there's a second IS-2 that's immobilized in the snow. And as soon as they can get that back into action, there might be a chance to stop these rampaging tigers on the left. I don't think there's any chance. Look at them coming forward. You know, the Elephant is moving forward. The Panzerwerfer is moving forward. A new Elephant is coming up the river from the north. This is oh, wow. knockout time for the Allies. Look at them all cowering in their base by their HQ, all those vetted squads. They can't do anything. Here they come. Oh man, there's some, something coming down. There's artillery or something coming down right in the Russian base. We got a strafing run. We got a Panzerwerfer shot. We got Stuka bombs. Yep. Okay, so that Tiger on the right is finally destroyed. So here comes a 75% strength IS-2 to try and re rescue these desperate Soviet infantry that are retreat retreating under fire back just a few feet to their own base. Oh, this is going to be a massacre. This is going to be awful. Yes, it, it, it is filthy nasty right now for Allied infantry. Planes are crisscrossing the map, <laughs> strafing, bombing, dropping just everything they've got. Here oh comes the my Stuka. God. Oh, that was awful. Double Stuka attack. Finishing off the Allied infantry in grand knockout style. Look at these three oh, planes man. just rotating on Oka River. A sea of bodies in the Allied base. Oh, more Stuka dive bombing. Jeez, this is just brutal. And you know what? There's two IS-2s floating out there in the field, and they're just not engaging. They're just, uh, it doesn't matter. There's 19 victory points left. Oh, they did? Oh, excellent. NTD informs us that a Tiger got dunked. Well, that's it. something. Oh. But it ain't enough. Something. Here they come. Now to engage, if there was just a few more victory points, maybe there might be something, but... Not gonna work today. It's the end. Gotta love Simbi's fighting spirit to try to wipe the wipe the VP in the center as his base is getting raided by uh, a, a gaggle. What what's a bunch of tigers? Cats? A, a a pride? A pride of tigers? Yeah, a pride of tigers. I don't know. I don't think don't think tigers move in, move in herds. That's lions. But uh, elephants? No, a herd of elephants and tigers working together. It's like Prides the African savanna. Herds. It is, in the, but in the freezing cold. All right, Oak, that was Oka River. That was a hell of a game. It's midnight now. I think we're going to have to skip the other semifinal and move on to the finals and move this fight on to the finals and on to Moscow Outskirts. Um, roll that video. NTD Axis wins. Stick with us. We'll be right back.